Hi everyone, it's Rob Timmings here again from ECT for Health with another KYJ. This is part two of our two-part series uh, where we were having a look at reflux and the medication that's used for it. So the question was, uh, what are the different types of medication that we use for reflux or for gastroesophageal reflux disease? To be able to answer that question, we really needed to go back to the cells. So if you haven't looked at the stomach cells in the part one video, go back, do that now and then come back to this one um, because the drugs really talk about the cells that we've already discussed in the first video. So the key player um, in the world of, of, of reflux is this guy down here called the parietal cell and we were introduced to the parietal cell in part one. The parietal cell is one of those cells that line the inside of the lumen of your stomach and their whole job is to secrete this hydrochloric acid and when I secrete hydrochloric acid I reduce the pH down to about one or two so very very low pH very acidic environment in my stomach and I do that for a couple of reasons very very low pH is antibacterial antiparasitic so it tends to to kill the vast majority of pathogens remember our stomach wall is is really a, um, a first line of defense it's a bit like our, our skin so it's a part of our defense our host defense mechanism first line of defense so so if i can keep a really acidic environment in my stomach then then i'm preventing uh, certainly some uh, bacteria from being able to penetrate into my immune system and get get beyond that first line so i secrete acid protectively but i also secrete acid for the second reason and that is to switch on this this substance that the chief cells make and the chief cells manufacture this chemical uh, which is called pepsinogen let's just quickly recap pepsinogen is secreted by the chief cells on the inside of your stomach uh, they're constantly being secreted under the influence of um, of a number of things uh, just to maintain an environment of pepsinogen in readiness for when protein should come into your body. And the moment the protein comes into your body, this hydrochloric acid, this very, very high concentration of acid, switches on the pepsinogen and it cleaves the pepsinogen into its active form and the active form of pepsinogen is called pepsin uh, and so this is the this is the the enzyme that, that starts breaking breaking down protein it's mixed with other enzymes from the pancreas called protease and and and, and other sort of um, uh, digestive enzymes but importantly pepsin kind of really kick starts the uh, the protein digestion process alrighty so pepsin's activated by hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid as we'll recall is made by these proton pumps and the proton pumps are switched on by three receptors this receptor here is called the gastrin receptor this receptor here is called the muscarinic receptor and it's switched on by a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine and this receptor here is called the H2 receptor or the histamine 2 receptor. And of course, because of its name, it's switched on by uh, the immune substance released from mast cells and basophils whenever you have an allergic reaction. And this is called histamine. So what are the classes of medications or the family of medications that we use when somebody has esophageal reflux and that, that acid is starting to rise up into the stomach? Remember, inside the stomach, there is a protective coating of mucus, and that's put there by those by those neck cells, the mucus-producing neck cells within the within the lining of your stomach. You produce mucus, and that protects your stomach wall, the meat of your stomach, from your own hydrochloric acid. But you don't have that protective mucus in your esophagus. So, should your hydrochloric acid start to rise up and into up and into your esophagus, it stands to reason without that protective mucus, you're going to start to get ulceration and burning, and inflammation, esophagitis. So, uh, th and 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 I guess just to backtrack a little bit. That, that's the other role of this hydrochloric acid. As the pH in your stomach drops, that's a strong stimulus for your lower esophageal sphincter to tighten up. That's the sphincter or the little muscle that's at the very bottom of your esophagus. And, and so as, as acid starts to be secreted, that sphincter becomes very, very tight. 
Uh, with age, it gets relaxed and it gets loose, and therefore the acid can reflux up. And so often with um, with hormonal changes, things like like um, like menopause, like pregnancy, like um, uh, puberty, then the esophage lower esophageal sphincter can start to become a little bit insufficient at those particular times, and as a result. Uh, that can become relaxed and, and acid can rise. So how do we how do we combat that acid rising, causing the esophagitis and the gastroesophageal reflux disease, the gourd? Well, there's three families. Of course, I could take the acid and I could neutralize it. it just in a very very crude um, description uh, here, if we could take this is a container here of acid. There it is. There's acid in this container, and it might have a pH that is very low. Let's call it a pH of 2. And if I was to pour into that acid something that neutralizes that acid, a substance like mylanta or a substance like gastrogel or, um, or gaviscon, I'm trying to think of the common brands, mylanta, gavis, gaviscon, gastrogel, they're the common ones. As I start to pour an antacid, which has a very high pH, a pH probably closer to sort of 10 to, to maybe 12, a very high pH, as I pour that into the stomach that's got that very low pH, then of course this neutralizes that too, a little mosquito buzzing around, this neutralizes that too and brings the entire fluid content or the pH of that stomach up closer to a sort of a more... Um, a more stomach and esophagus friendly pH that sits around the, the maybe the six to eight mark, something that's a little bit more neutral and causes less damage. So that's your that's your mylantas, that's your uh, your gaviscon and your and your, your gas, gastrogel. And you can probably think of others, quickies, tablets, um, even peppermint. Essentially anything that's kind of got that chalky bicarbonate, you know, mix up some bicarb. It all does the same thing. It buffers the acid. The proton pump inhibitors. Now these drugs, these are a, a little bit controversial. They've been, um, I've written about them fairly recently in our blog and uh, they've been a bit controversial over the last, last couple of years because of problems associated with long-term use. These are the drugs that all end in Prazole, P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. So you know of them as drugs like Omeprazole and Esomeprazole and Lansoprazole, Lansoprazole, uh, Pantoprazole. There's probably others that I've forgotten, but they all end in this, this suffix prazole. And what these drugs do, if we can just go back over to our parietal cell over here, you can see that the machinery inside the parietal cell that actually makes the acid are these things here called the proton pumps. And it's these proton pumps that pump out that hydrochloric acid. Well, if I could switch those off, the proton pumps, with a drug called a proton pump inhibitor, a PPI, that's what those drugs are doing. The prazole drugs are switching off the proton pump, preventing the stomach parietal cells from making acid. The histamine 2 blockers have been used for many, many years. These are the classic stomach active antihistamines. These are drugs like renitidine, pardon me, and cimetidine and famotidine. Again, a controversial group, particularly with renitidine. Recently, there's been a, a nationwide recall just in the last few months of renitidine. Not the, the drug itself, but many of the tablets like Zantac, to name just one of probably a host of different drug names or trade names that make the uh, the product renitidine. There's an additive in the renitidine that um, ha has been associated with some adverse events, and so you can you can follow that by doing a little bit of research on renitidine recall nationwide. So that's drugs like renitidine, cimetidine, which I think is trade name tagamet, um, uh, famotidine and there'd probably be others. These are called the H2 blockers. Again, back over here to this parietal cell. H2 is this little receptor here. And when this receptor is lit up with the chemical histamine released from mast cells during an allergic response or some sort of a substance that you've swallowed, that you've come into contact with, that has caused 
that has caused your immune system to be interested. Uh, histamine is the is the, the the protein that is released, and as histamine is released, it docks with these histamine two receptors, and that switches on this hydrochloric acid, making an abundance of acid. Some of that, of course, can reflux, giving a whole lot of gastric symptoms uh, associated with uh, with an allergy. So if I could shut down that histamine receptor, that histamine 2 receptor, those drugs are called histamine 2 antagonists or antihistamines or histamine 2 blockers. Okay, and that brings us to the very, very last of our drugs, probably the last on the list and probably the last choice for GORD is your anticholinergic drugs. These drugs are generally used as antispasmodic drugs within the gastrointestinal system. You know of these drugs as hyacin. You know of them as atropin, atropin, and a common trade name is a drug called buscopan. And what these drugs do is they, as the name implies, they are anticholinergic. They switch off the receptor that responds to acetylcholine. So remember your stomach lining is innervated with parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves. The parasympathetic branch is called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve chemically talks to these parietal cells in the stomach with this chemical called acetylcholine. For that reason, an old fashioned name for the parasympathetic nervous system used to be called the cholinergic nervous system. And for that reason, drugs that block those cholinergic receptors are called anticholinergic drugs. And so they are drugs like atropin and, and, and quell and travel calm, those anti sort of seasick drugs uh, that reduce the gastric motility and of course reduce the amount of acetylcholine that can bind with or dock with these receptors. As acetylcholine docks with those receptors on the parietal cell, this causes again more stomach acid and more gastric motility to occur. They are our four main classes of drugs with a small selection of the drugs that you've probably heard of and I've probably used. You can see that there's a number of different ways that we can combat gastroesophageal reflux disease and uh, or heartburn or, or indigestion, whatever your nana wants to call it. At the end of the day, gastritis and esophagitis is the problem from a rising stomach acid into a territory that isn't protected by that mucus secreted by those goblet cells, that the, 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 the neck cells that occur within the mucus producing cells in the stomach. Okay, that's it. That was part two uh, of our uh, reflux medication. Hope that was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, maybe go back and look at part one again and then come back to part two. Happy to take questions. Uh, like, follow, ring the bell, do all the subscribe stuff that people on the YouTube channels tell you to do. Of course, come to our Facebook page, have a look at our website and uh, love to see you at one of our classes and one of our courses. I hope you enjoyed the KYJ. See you guys.